great. So, uh, you know, I think I need to emphasize the fact that the only way to have happy patients is to be a happy embryologist. And we sometimes tend to forget that. And I'm going to explain a little bit about why we forget that and what we need to do about it. The best way, of course, to be a happy embryologist is to make happy embryos. And you can't have happy patients until they get pregnant. And patients can't get pregnant until they have good embryos for the clinician to implant. And that's the truth, that the IVF lab is the heart of IVF treatment. This is something which all of us know, embryologists know. Unfortunately, the problem is that patients don't know. Because when you talk to patients who've been through an IVF cycle, they'll tell you the name of the doctor whom they went to, they'll tell you the name of the assistant, they'll tell you the name of the nurses, but they won't have any idea about what actually happens in the IVF lab. And this is a big problem because for some reason, it's become a well-guarded secret that no one knows what actually happens in an IVF lab. And that perhaps I think that's the reason why embryologists get such little respect. And I think it's partly embryologists to blame because unless you connect with patients, unless you let patients know exactly how important the role of the embryologist is, how important the role of the IVF lab is, this situation will never change because the truth of the matter is that the embryos are poor quality. It's always the embryologist's fault. And when a patient gets pregnant, it's obviously the clinician who did such a good job. And I think this is where we need to start, that we need to be able to reach out to patients because patients today have absolutely no idea about what an embryologist is and what an embryologist does. But the truth is being an embryologist is not easy. And I think it's going to become even harder with all the new ART regulations. So, you know, in the past, you basically had to keep patients happy. You had to keep doctors happy. And now, of course, you have to keep all these government officials happy. You know how hard that is. But the fact of the matter is there's lots of work, lots of hassle. Most of it has become paperwork these days. And when things don't go well, you have unhappy patients and you have unhappy doctors. And it's just getting progressively worse. And the fact of the matter is that Given the amount of hard work embryologists put in, really, the amount they get reimbursed is just not enough. And this is partly because embryologists need to stop thinking of themselves only as scientists or only as technicians who work in the lab and do what the doctor tells them. The truth of the matter is that you have to be a professional. You have to keep on learning all the time. But even that's not enough. You need to learn to manage the IVF lab because you're an integral part of the IVF clinic. And you will have juniors, you need to teach them, you need to train them. You obviously have to deal with doctors all the time, which is never easy because they're the ones who own the clinic and uh, pay the salaries. But you also need to manage your own money. You need to take care of your family members. But none of this will ever happen unless you first learn to take care of yourself. But honestly, I think this is what it's become today, that just having more Hats doesn't seem to matter. I'm not saying you need to become Ravan, but definitely you definitely need more heads. And I think things are going to become worse because we're increasingly seeing this all the time. Is that anything goes wrong, it's always the doctor who's sued. Anything happens, and especially with the new regulation, we're all going to be so vulnerable that even if you have 999 happy patients, if for whatever reason you have one unhappy patient, they can make your life miserable. And when a doctor gets sued, the clinic gets sued, so does the embryologist. And I think this is where I need to start. I think we need to stop worrying about laws and regulations and stuff like that. They will come, they will go. But I think as long as we manage to practice ethically, we'll be fine. Because ethics is far more important than legal standards. You need to be able to sleep well at night. You need to be able to think, yes, I did my best possible I could for my patients. The reality is it's hard to learn ethics. And the only way to do this is to find teachers and role models who are ethical themselves. And this, unfortunately, is becoming increasingly hard today. And this is one of those things which, unfortunately, no one talks about. But the entire standard of medical practice has gone completely downhill. And I think this is why one thing which embryologists need to understand and I'm going to be talking about a series of E, embryologists need to be empathetic. You need to engage with patients directly. It's not enough just to be very skilled at doing embryo biopsies. You need to learn to be able to explain to patients what you're doing and you have to be compassionate. 
you know, part of the problem is because you spend the entire day in the lab, walled off under a microscope, watching what's happening, you lose contact with the human element of IVF. And that's a huge danger. And honestly, if the compassion is missing, then competence can never make up for it. And I always tell all my juniors, the patient does not care how much you know until he knows how much you care. And don't forget the reason we became embryologists, the reason we became doctors is because we like helping people. We want them to help them to complete their family. We change their lives so dramatically. It's literally a miracle every time. So how do you develop empathy? Ideally, of course, I would say, you know, you would have an empathetic clinician and you would learn from him, but that's becoming increasingly hard. A lot of times you learn bad habits from doctors. And therefore, I think every once in a year, you should watch this great movie called Munna by MBBS. Still a classic. It will help you polish your EQ skills. And honestly, a high EQ, whether you're dealing with patients, with doctors, with regulators, with your team members, with your juniors, is far more important than anything else. This is not something which people are taught, but actually it's surprisingly easy to learn. I mean, I've given you an acronym. We all love acronyms and we all love all these fancy this things. Most of it is common sense. And the great way to learn empathy is from a child because a child to that extent is pretty powerless and helpless, but they can still wrap you around their little finger and make you do what they want because they know how to smile and butter you up. They have an open posture. You lean forward. It's very helpful to have eye contact with the patient because then that way, at least the patient knows that you're focusing on them. You're talking to them. I think this again becomes an important issue because a lot of embryologists say, well, you know, I'm getting my salary. How does anything else matter to me? But actually, if you want the doctor to regard you with respect, you need to step up. The doctor needs to treat you as a business partner, not just as an employee, because the truth of the matter is the lab is a cost center. Because obviously, a lot of the money in an IVF treatment goes on lab disposables, consumables. But the lab is a profit center because without a lab, there would be no IVF at all. And that's something which you need to bring up. You need to understand the principles. Yes, it's true that medicine is a profession, but every clinic, especially a private clinic, is also a small business. And every IVF doctor in private practice is an entrepreneur. And that's why you need to help the doctor by learning practice management skills. And this is, again, why connecting with patients is so important, because you're effectively cutting out the middleman. You don't have to give commissions or kickbacks or referrals to someone to send patients to you. And that's why online information therapy is so important. We then come back to marketing. And for a lot of senior doctors, marketing is a dirty word. We're doctors. We're professionals. This is below our dignity. We're so good. Patients will automatically come to us. That's actually not true. And it's never been true. Clinics have always marketed themselves. Of course, 50 years ago, there was no internet. So there was no question of having a website, but times have changed. Patients have changed. We need to change. Traditionally, it was word of mouth marketing. What did that mean? Which means, you know, you delighted your patients. They would send more patients to you. You would give talks at rotary clubs. You would have free medical camps, which is how the community found out exactly what you're doing. And word of mouth is definitely still the best. That doesn't change, but it takes time. But it's the most worthwhile investment of your time. How do you promote your clinic? Advertising is, of course, a shortcut, but it's extremely expensive and it's not cost effective. And honestly, I actually think it ends up backfiring because you end up spending so much money on things like Google AdWords or full page ads in newspapers and the returns going to keep on constantly going down. I think this is the secret today is that you need to go to where your patients are. And the reality is that all your patients are online today because Unfortunately, or otherwise, patients don't trust doctors anymore. They trust other patients. They trust Dr. Google. They trust the website. And that's why you need to be there. And this is such a huge opportunity, especially for young embryologists. There is tons of information available on IVF today, but most of it is in English. We need people like you to create local language, whether it's Tamil, Telugu, Marathi websites, which educate patients and educate doctors as well about the role of the IVF lab and what can do. Because the reality is a lot of young junior gynecologists who will start IVF clinics have no exposure to IVF. So they don't know what's happening in the IVF lab and they can't support you. And you should create your own personal brand because it actually acts like a magnet. Your brand is what people think about you when you're not physically present. And if you create that website, and there's very little competition for local language websites today, so it's a huge opportunity. 
you will become the trusted source. Remember, patients don't trust Dr. Google. There's just too much rubbish on too many websites, but they trust you. And if you're willing to provide reliable information, then you will become the source which people will trust. And the simple thing to do, just something which anyone can do today, is start a YouTube channel. Don't expect magical results. It'll take at least six months and you need to do this consistently. But the good news is it's free. The more often you do it, the better you will become. Quality is directly proportional to quantity. And right now it's completely blue ocean or virgin territory. So this is something you should explore. It's not enough, of course, just to educate patients. You need to educate yourself. And the reality is medical knowledge has a very short half-life. And like we keep on telling doctors, when you graduate, half of what we taught you was wrong. But the trouble is we don't know which half. And this is why embryologists like doctors need to become lifelong, independent, self-directed adult learners so you can remain up to date. Now, I understand books are expensive. They get outdated. Old editions are unreliable anymore. So these are two things. And if nothing else, I think perhaps this is the most important slide. The world's largest ebook library is onelib.in. And if you don't know this, please explore this. Yes, I understand these are all pirated books. People have issues about intellectual property and rights. That's a long discussion. But you'll get practically every IVF book, every scientific book, every medical book you want on this particular site, and you can download it for free. And this is such a valuable site. And I really admire this lady who's put up all medical journals, scientific journal articles, full text online for free. And this is such a valuable resource so you can keep updated and even better, you can download these articles and share them with your doctor. You can share them with patients and your doctor will respect you and he knows how well read and well informed you are. So as I keep on saying, please educate your patients. This is what I call prescribing information therapy. And this is something we've been doing for many years. So for example, on our website at drmalpani.com, we have an IVF comic book and patients aren't very willing to read books but they don't mind reading comic books. So it's not enough to complain that patients don't want to educate themselves. It's up to us to be able to create educational material so they're happy to learn for themselves. At the end of the day, you need to become a trusted professional, but you need to earn that trust. Patients aren't going to give it away anymore because there's so much competition. They have so much choice. And this is such a valuable equation we need to remember. Trust is needs to be earned and it's a question of credibility reliability intimacy what does that mean credible is can the patient trust what you say and the reality is patients will counter check everything you tell them they go to google and see is what you're saying right wrong is it something different you are you reliable if you tell a patient hey i'm going to call you tomorrow and show you what your embryos look like will you actually do that or not Intimacy, again, depends on are you empathetic? Does he know that he un you understand their feelings and what they're going through? And the denominator is self-orientation, which means are you doing this just in order to earn more money or are you doing it because you care about patients and want to help them? As I keep on saying, play to your strengths. You have a lot of them as young embryologists, far more than I do. You have a professional education, which is up to date. You have a lot of energy. You have a lot of resilience. You can bounce back because you have your whole life ahead of you. You can be agile. And India's economy is booming. I mean, you know, obviously our population is huge. The larger the population, the more the number of infertile couples. And it has become a land of opportunity. There are lots of things you can do. You obviously need to learn to sell. And selling is not a bad word. We're selling all the time, either to your wife or to your kids, why they need to do their homework or why you want to buy a new car. Learn to read. There's no excuse. I think what's the difference between a literate person and an illiterate person? The ability to absorb information by being able to read. And if you're literate and you refuse to read, you might as well be illiterate. I think learning to write, and that's the advantage of having your own website, your own YouTube channel on social media, that you can share your information. That's how you create a digital brand. And you can't do everything yourself and you shouldn't even want to do everything yourself. Build a team. The better your juniors, the easier it is for you to promote yourself. And finally, this is the stoic philosophy or the Bhagavad Gita. Only focus on what you can control. Forget about the rest of the world. Forget about the government, the ART Act, laws, everything else. You know, all this stuff will come and go. There is a lot of joy in being an embryologist. And I think sometimes the stress which we deal with, we tend to forget the big picture. Care for your patients. Treat them all like VIPs. And I always tell embryologists, please provide photos 
of embryos. You've taken so much time and love and attention and effort in order to create those embryos. Give them photos. This is great documentation that you've provided the best possible medical care. It increases the patient's confidence. It shows off what a good embryologist you are. There's documentation they can share with the rest of the world. And you can tell them, hey, here's your embryo. Start your baby album from today. And when a patient thanks you for helping them to get pregnant, please relish that moment. This is the real reward. You know, the financial income is much better if you're a share broker or a banker or a CEO or whatever else. But the emotional income of being an embryologist is excellent. And this is something we need to focus on rather than keep on comparing. Hey, I'm still driving just a Maruti. This guy has a Mercedes. Take advantage of that positive feedback which your patients lavish on you when you help them to have a baby. The golden rule is simple. Patients are the practice. Everything else is just paperwork. But unfortunately, as I keep on emphasizing, life is getting harder. I'm not going to say no. So you need to learn to take care of yourself. And if you're happy, you'll be able to keep everyone else happy. You need to balance your professional personal priorities. You need to have a strong support system, other embryologists you can talk to. And at some point, once you start doing something and it gets boring because it's routine, give it to a junior and move on and challenge yourself. There's so many challenges in today's world. This is a problem. And especially when things don't go well, the doctor is always happy to send the patient to the embryologist. Okay, now you explain what went wrong. But you need to be able to explain. You can't abandon them in their time of need. And of course, patients have a right to be angry and they're not being difficult. They don't want to trouble you, but they are upset. You need to acknowledge that. You need to learn to talk to relatives. And it's important to be able to network with other embryologists and doctors. You have to have a high EQ in order to become a scientist, to become an embryologist, but it's not enough. You need a high EQ as well. And the good news is these skills can be learned. You're smart. And for example, we've written this book called Successful Medical Practice. It says winning strategies for doctors, but could very easily be winning strategies for embryologists. And the good news is the entire book, all of them, whether it's for patients, doctors, whoever else, is all available free on this website, which is thebestmedicalcare.com. We'd encourage you. It's a free resource. The more you help your patients, the happier your patients are going to be and the happier you're going to be. Thank you very much.